Josh Colmenter will get his final start of the 2014 season. Drafted in 2007 out of Central Michigan in the 15th round by the Arizona Diamondbacks. And he will face a completely different lineup now for Mike Matheny's club. Colton Wong will lead things off. Then Randall Gritchick, Oscar Tavares is now in there. Originally, these guys were not. The only regular that was in there that stays in a similar spot is Matt Adams. You've got Descalso in there now and Tony Cruz and Borges, Cosma, and Nick Greenwood will get the start for the Cardinals today and not Adam Wainwright. And the first pitch is taken for a strike and we're underway in game number 162. Take a deep breath. The Cardinals are the champions <laughs> of the Central Division. And to relax and enjoy this lineup. Absolutely. There's a broken bat. Hit to first. And taken there by Mark Trumbo, one of the heroes last night for Arizona. And that's the first out of our ball game this afternoon, and it brings in Randall Gritchick. Just spoke to uh, John Mosellock, and I said, you happy? And he said, I finally can chill a little bit. I can relax. I think that's how everybody felt, you know, this thing coming down to the wire. No doubt. I mean, it was... Kind of a scary proposition. Cardinals knew they were going to the postseason. They didn't know if they were going to play tomorrow in a tiebreaker game. But now we know they will open up in Los Angeles on Friday night. And we expect Adam Wainwright to make that start. Well, let's hope. <laughs> yeah. You know, and for the Pirates, it's a, a double whammy because they go with Garrett Cole today, who was so good in that game against Johnny Cueto, who did pick up his 20th win. And they use Cole to go for the division today. And now he cannot pitch, you wouldn't think, coming back on Wednesday against San Francisco. Also, their backup catcher, Russell Martin, is already hurt. Now their backup got hurt as well. I think they're going to go with Volquez on Wednesday. Here's a 1 2. And a high fly ball lifted out to deep left field. Enciarte is back and makes the catch on the track. Detroit has won their game today, three to nothing, so they clinch the American League Central Division and just beat out Kansas City. And here is Oscar Tavares. So no Matt Holiday in the lineup. Tavares in the third spot. Detroit will face Baltimore. Yep, they're here. Tony La Russa, Dave Duncan, and Dave Stewart. That's ripped out to right. And the catch is made. Right to David Peralta. No score after a half inning. No Adam Wainwright, so Nick Greenwood will get the call. The left-hander that has bailed out the Cardinals on a number of occasions as their long man this year. He'll be our key starter. 18 games, a record of 2-1, and one, and an ERA just over 5. Almost seems like he's started a couple games because of some of his long relief appearances. But the Cardinals are very intrigued with Greenwood, and this is a great opportunity for them to get a good extended look at him. Ender Enciarte, left fielder for Arizona, will lead it off. The Diamondbacks have scored 11 runs. They've knocked out 25 hits in the two games of this series so far. You think about a championship team and how you have to have depth in the minor leagues. You know, it's a 25-man roster as Greenwood makes the play. But in reality, it's about a 35- to 40-man roster. At some point, all these guys will contribute, and that's what's happened with Nick Greenwood this year. A.J. Pollock will bat second, followed by David Peralta, then Mark Trumbo. Seven for 19 in his career against the Cardinals. He had two of those three home runs last night. Then Jake Lamb, Tuffy Gosowicz, Cliff Pennington, D.D. Gregorius, and Josh Colmenter. 
And part of that process, as you know, Al, is having a long man that over the course of a long season saves a rotation or a bullpen. And that's what Greenwood has done. He's done a nice job in that capacity and used sparingly because the Cardinals are blessed with the fact that they've got a pretty good stable of starters that usually will get, go six innings. You know, they'll go to the five, six innings, so not that often you need that uh, long man. It's the first time in franchise history the Cardinals are going to the postseason for four consecutive years. Granted, the wild card certainly helps, but it's back-to-back -back Central Division championships for the regime of Mike Matheny and Derek Lilliquist. Just extending this great run. Cardinals with their rich history. You'd have to say this is going to be the the DeWitt ownership. The run that they've had of postseason games is just uh, unparalleled. Here's a 2 2. Greenwood again. Nice play, Nick. Two down. Cardinals defensively, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Let's take a look. Richick in left, Borges in center, Tavares is in right. And these are all late changes. I mean, right before first pitch. Descalso at third, Cosma at short, Wong and Adams on the right side of the infield. Very well could see them in game one of the division series together against Los Angeles. And Tony Cruz is behind the plate. Adams, Wong, and Gritchick were in the original lineup. But all different spots in the batting order except for Adams. He's the cleanup hitter. One ball, one strike on David Peralta, who's hitting 289 with eight home runs. He and Trumbo went back to back in the first inning last night off of Lance Lynn, and he's driven in 36. At times, we've seen Greenwood where he'll drop down with that breaking ball. Not on that pitch, but a good slider there from Nick. You know, he's just uh, doesn't have overpowering stuff, but a good makeup. And he strikes out David Peralta. We played an inning at game number 162 of the 2014 campaign. No score. Happy Bill DeWitt. Yeah, I am with the chairman, Dan, and uh, I would guess the feeling, excitement, you're happy, but also maybe a sense of relief that you guys got it done in our central champs. Well, you always want to close it out. It's, uh, it's a great thrill and, and a great accomplishment for this team, and, uh, you know, we're glad, we, glad we're in there. You had to be a Cincinnati fan, even a Johnny Cueto fan. That's a bit ironic, isn't it? Well, it is, but uh, we were certainly rooting for Johnny today because, you know, because it's an opportunity to rest Wayno, and he's pitched a lot of innings this year, and hopefully he'll pitch a lot more in the playoffs. You know, I was talking with uh, John Mazalock, and he said he was talking with you. Very fitting that it came down for the uh, to the final day for this ball club because, really, they've had to fight for everything, and nothing has come easy. Now this team's really scratched and clawed all year and we've had winning uh, months all six months but by thin margin so you know we haven't gone on a big run and we haven't gotten buried with a big losing streak either and it's just been one of those seasons where you know we we uh, we keep hanging in there and keep fighting and here we are the division champs. How about the uh, job done by Mike Matheny. Terrific you know he, he just stayed positive all year and you know to get to this point. Uh, and you think about what he's done in his uh, uh, first term as manager, it's pretty impressive. Last thing, when you talk to Cardinal fans, they say this team gives them heart attacks, a lot of stress, they're happy with the wins. Do you stress out watching your ball club? Well, it's, uh, they're, they're always anxious to watch. Uh, you know, we, we've played a lot of close games this year. We've had great success in one-run games, and, you know, those uh, take their toll on players and fans. I think the players hang, hang in there better than the fans and, and for us in the organization it's uh, just a lot of fun to see. Well Bill congratulations and we appreciate the time. Thanks a lot Jim. All right guys. Jim great job. Postseason tested to be sure. One out runner at second brings in Tony Cruz. A look at the Dobbs defense of Arizona. It's Ciarte in left Pollock in center. And Peralta is in right. Lamb, Gregorius, Pennington, and Trumbo along the infield. Gosowicz is behind the plate. Since 2011, no team has played more playoff games 
than your St. Louis Cardinals. 48 this year. Detroit has played 35, but 48 coming into this year. Dan, there's been times where everyone's been concerned about the offense or lack of it, but I think going into postseason, it may be a good advantage because runs will be at a premium then, and the Cardinal pitchers are well tested where they don't have much margin for error, so it might end up being a blessing. Two balls and no strikes. Cardinals pitching has been terrific. 15 straight games coming into play today that the rotation hasn't allowed more than three runs. So you go back to September 11th, the rotation ERA is 1.95. And it's pitching that's going to win right. in postseason play. And you're going to be faced uh, every night by an outstanding pitcher, so runs are going to be tough to come by. And there's something to be said that, you know, Cardinal pitchers are accustomed to going out there, and they will understand that, uh, you know, they're not going to have big leads or be able to relax a little bit. So they're pitching under pressure. And they've done that all year. I think Tony Cruz is interesting in the fact that he's finishing last week with a couple of big hits for the Cardinals during the homestand. And the Cardinals flirting with the idea of carrying three catchers. You'd have A.J. Brzezinski, Cruz, and, of course, Yadier Molina. It could be some real interesting decisions on that roster. And really what you're talking about is essentially... Krasinski, in my mind, is added as a left-handed bat off the bench. Yes, as a threat. And that's what something that Cole Mentor does. He pitches up and down. Doesn't throw particularly hard. You know, you're going to be 85, 86 with his fastball, but he'll pitch at the top and bottom of the strike zone. The 2-2 inside. He had one of the greatest high school careers ever by any player to come out of the state of Michigan. He was a four-year starter. At one point, his team won 75 games in a row. Doesn't throw overly hard. Earlier in his career, a lot of cutters and curveballs, and this year has gone back to spotting the fastball. And the 3-2. And Cruz hits it in the air out to shallow left center field. And Ciarte is there. And there's two down. The Cardinals line up. For the final game of this regular season, Wong, Richick, Tavares, Adams, Descalso, Cruz, now Peter Borges, then Pete Cosma, and Nick Greenwood. See all these right-handed hitters bunched at the bottom of the order. And Cole Mentor has held righties to seven hits in his last six starts. Runner at second is Matt Adams. A win today would give the Cardinals 90 this year. Last year was 97, best record in baseball. And home field advantage. And that's now given to the Washington Nationals. And Jordan Zimmerman today pitched a no-hitter to finish up the regular season for the Nets. They were looking at that as being a final tune-up for him and maybe not going yeah, not very deep into the game, but when he's got a no-hitter, what do you do? Yeah. Kind of forced to keep him in there, and then Brian Price, the manager of the Reds, made a controversial, or it was, could have been a controversial decision to leave Cueto into the ball game with a runner at third base, and and uh, one out. One out. One out. Instead of pinch hitting there and trying to get him the win, but Cueto took care of business there and got drove in the, the game winner. It wouldn't have surprised me one bit if Mike Matheny still started Adam Wainwright and gave him an inning or two or five, whatever he I, wants. I he, fully he knows himself it. is better, uh, better than anybody. Yeah, I fully expected that to happen. A lot of innings for Wainwright, but creatures of habit are starting pitchers. The 2-2. Two -two. 
And a strikeout of Borges. Matt Adams with a double down the right field line. Dropping the barrel of the bat for the Cardinals first hit. Toyota keys to the game. Hey, real simple. Have fun and don't get anybody hurt. <laughs> yeah. I Cardinals, like that. Yeah, I mean the Cardinals are champions. Just, but you, you just think about the you know the young players that are out there wearing the Cardinal uniform. You know they're thrilled to death to get this start, and they're going to try and show somebody. You know they're auditioning for jobs for next year, not only for the Cardinals but 29 other clubs. That's the way you got to look at it. We just had a guest in the booth, Carol Schrader from St. Louis, wearing an Al Rabaski jersey, and Jim saw her down on the field after interviewing Mr. DeWitt and it was Mr. DeWitt who said hey don't you guys bring those folks up that wear the Roboski jerseys yes we do all right <laughs> Jim brought her right on up she, originally from St. Louis said she lives about 60 miles uh, from Reno now and drove up here today for the ball game and moved on her favorite team watches his every game on Fox Sports Midwest Jake Lamb will be the hitter. One of the great uh, scenes already from our ball game that we showed a little bit of it was Yadier Molina warming up Adam Wainwright. They were down in the uh, Cardinal bullpen getting ready for the potential start. And right before our first pitch, the Reds wrapped it up. They beat Pittsburgh. Those two walked in. And you wouldn't believe the amount of Cardinal fans that are here that were near the dugout and a standing ovation. And Wainwright, Molina both smiling, tipping their caps to the fans. Neat moment here at the ballpark. Well, you could tell when Cueto got that base hit and they got their 2 1 lead. You know, the reaction as people are just watching, well, not the video, but just the numbers changing up on the scoreboard. I couldn't believe Brian Price let Johnny Cueto hit for himself. But then <laughs> after he got a base hit, I said, Great move. Yeah, great move. Made all the sense in the world. You mm -hmm. talked about the Cardinals lineup, all the righties. There are a number of lefties in this lineup, which is to the benefit of Nick Greenwood. We hope. The 2-2. Two -two. And a fly ball lifted into right center. Oscar Tavares. Called off by Borges. What do you see with the delivery of Nick Greenwood? Well, if it's going to be the same cam angle we saw earlier, watch how he did the ball he kind of opens that glove a little bit and you wonder if guys with the video today could could see you know whether he's got on the side of the ball or got it taking it out of the glove see if it's a breaking ball just by where he's positioned his fingers on on the ball and a ground ball that's hit to short gobbled up by Cosmo boy he looks smooth out there six up and six down for Nick Greenwood to travel with us day in and day out. Mike Kelling, our producer, Brian McCann, Tom Mee, our longtime director, Keith O'Brien. They do such great work. We've had Dan Hyatt with us a number of times, who does an incredible job in research. If you're wondering about tickets, by the way, Cardinals have sold over 43,000 for game one, but still some tickets remaining for game one of the division series. 40,000 for game two. So right now, those tickets are available for games one and two of the division series. Cardinals.com. Pete Cosma is six for 20. Oh, and two the count. Pete's done a nice job coming up this last time. You know what? You can count on him. He may not hit, you know, 300, but he's going to play very good defense, plus defense, and you can count on him when you put him in there. He's ready to go. 
you know, Mike, Mike talks about that too. You know, just the fact that he never is going to be unprepared. You put him in the field, he'll make good plays for you. And he's come up with a lot of clutch hits in September and October. He's hit in four of the five games that uh, he started and hit 294 since his return. And the 2 2 is chopped to third. Jake Lamb with it. One down. Brings in Greenwood, and then we'll head back to the top of the lineup in Colton Wong. Pitcher number 62. Cardinals drew over 3.5 million fans to the turnstiles this year and thank you to what is undoubtedly the best fans in baseball. An incredible amount of people coming to the ballpark and supporting the Cardinals. As Greenwood hits it to the right side. Trumbo flips to Cole Mentor for out number two. I'm not going to say that the team was tight, but you could get the feeling after last night it wasn't a relaxed bunch, in my opinion. And yet, in the clubhouse today, you know, they had one TV that was watching baseball, and every other TV and all the other spots was watching football. And they were just pretty much going about their business, knew what they had to do today. And but they got the extra bonus of the pirate loss. So took the field today knowing that they're the champions, knowing that the next game they'll be playing after this one will be Friday in Los Angeles. I talked to some of the guys about that, and they said, well, it is one way to get away from it just for a little bit. Worry about our game, not take a hard look with an eye towards that TV, but not a hard look and just dive into every pitch and try to relax before the game their game the Cardinals here this afternoon two outs and nobody on and a 1 1 pitch you notice Cole mentor as a true 12 to 6 breaking ball he's really over the top with his pitches yeah you know he and like I said he'll he'll throw a lot of pitches up in the zone so that makes that 12 to 6 curveball very effective at the bottom and Juan hits a fly ball out to left and Ciarte is there The telecast, the Arizona Diamondbacks have done something very classy. And over the PA system, they've announced congratulations to the St. Louis Cardinals, the champions of the NL Central Division. Twice they've done that. Yeah. Very classy move. Did it right after Cincinnati won, and then, as you said, in between innings, and see Yachty looked very tense, didn't he? In the dugout there. Breaking ball and he hung it. A base hit out to left in the first hit for Arizona. Cliff Pennington, the switch hitter with a single to left. Oh, there goes the no hitter. This October, history is made. And Fox Sports 1 will have it on television. You can be there in person with tickets at cardinals.com mention those tickets are available for the division championship and world series at cardinals.com here's dd gregorius and by the way the team store now featuring central division championship merchandise that has just happened team store is open right now and the authentic store you're going to stay open late tonight until 8 open up early tomorrow at 7 a.m to get that championship merchandise, the division championship hats, T-shirts, whatever you can think of, they have it right now at Cardinals Authentics and the team store open till 8 tonight. Opens up early at 7 tomorrow. Gregorius Greenwood is facing right now. He lives in Curacao, but he was born in Amsterdam. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. 
The 1 1. There's that good breaking ball by Greenwood. You think about his position in this postseason. That's what I'm saying. There's going to be some interesting decisions and in who's going to be on that playoff roster. Think about the middle infield and Descalso and Cosma. I think I think Cosma makes the the cut. The fact that he can play third, short, second. He's got speed if you need a pinch runner. Greenwood is able to knock it down and makes the play. Runner advancing to second. He's made a couple of good plays off the mound today, and we've seen he can really field his position. We've seen that throughout the year. Well, that's three straight games right there. Not sure he'd get, get his bare hand. Ball comes up, or he got a leg, but he recovers, makes the play. Why he was running the dugout, but his infielders were all concerned about it. And he says he's all right. Josh Cole mentor. Runner at second base. That's Pennington. No score here in the bottom of the third. If you're wondering at home if we are going to be carrying the celebration, of course we will. Al will be in the clubhouse along with Jim Hayes. We have exclusive entrance into the clubhouse right after the game. Team will gather privately for a moment or two. And then after that, they'll open up the doors and we'll have a little fun. Bat chopped to the right side. Adams flips to Greenwood as he steps on the bag for the second out. Pennington to third. Ender Enciarte trying to keep his hitting streak alive before the season is through. Digs in for the second time. Enciarte has got a 15 game hitting streak. That's the second longest rookie streak this year in the National League, and he owns the, the longest one also at 18 games. It's kind of interesting that the numbers that NCRTA put up there that the Arizona Diamondbacks Baseball Writers Association, they named uh, Peralta as their rookie of the year. Runner third and trying to bunt on that first pitch with two outs. I mean, that pitch right there shows you that Greenwood can be very tough on these left handers. Now, we haven't seen him drop down that sidearm that he'll occasionally do. Now, primarily done out of the bullpen. They say as a starter, it was few and far between when he did that. Fastball up and away, and it's one and two. Another one of these lefties that has really shown that he's not going to be scared out there. He'll handle all situations. And a fly ball that's out of play. One and two the count with two down. Pennington, the runner at third. There's no score in the final game of this regular season. No game tomorrow. Pittsburgh lost today, assuring the Cardinals the Central Division Championship. At the start of the day, there was a possibility that there were going to be three playoff games tomorrow. 
two in the American League, Cardinals and Pirates in the National League, but that won't happen now. And a liner into center. The catch made by Borges, and we head to the fourth. No score here in the desert. Championship gear is now available at Cardinals Authentics and the team store. That'll stay open till 8 tonight and opens up early tomorrow at 7 a.m. And head down there right now. Randall Gritchick got a chance to start all three games in this series. Well, right now, you'd have to say he's your everyday right fielder. Very good defensively. He's been able to contribute offensively. Three for nine in this series. He's had three different stints with the club, and this last one has been a difference maker for him and for the club to get all the playing time that he has had. Richick yanks it down the left field line, and it's foul. I'm going to make you very happy in a second, Dan. I'm waiting. You're turning down ice cream? What do we have? <laughs> I'm intrigued now. <laughs> I think it's safe. You've turned, turned over a new leaf then. But it's next door? <laughs> oh, yeah, bring it on over. <laughs> <laughs> and you're absolutely right about uh, about Randall Gritchick. And I think a lot of it just stands is the change in attitude. You know, he came up here and said, Okay, I belong this time. Where the first time you're kind of in awe of the major leaguers. Second time you kind of give pitchers too much credit. There he gets struck out on a, just a perfect pitch down the way. So there's the first out. That catches the outside corner. Home plate umpire is Jordan Baker. French fries, the hamburgers, the ice cream. Here's an 0-1 pitch to Tavares, who lined out to right and lines it into right center again. And a sliding catch by Peralta. And Tavares can't catch a break. Maybe that's one of the reasons why Peralta was named their rookie of the year. Also has nine triples on the season. Tavares gets the ball down and in. He just turns on it and a very nice catch. But Peralta, once again, has been signed as a Cardinal pitcher and spent three years in the Cardinal Meyer League, hurt his arm, had two shoulder surgeries. Spent a couple years in independent baseball and then got signed uh, last season and here playing in the big leagues for the Diamondbacks. Matt Adams doubled down the right field line first time up. Yeah, it's two balls and no strikes. One thing about thinking of your bench is that if Adams would go down, knock on wood, it wouldn't happen with an injury, but. Descalso is your backup first baseman. You wouldn't think Xavier Scruggs is going to make that cut for the 25 man postseason roster. You wouldn't think so. The 2 1. Pulled the string and it's 2 and 2. Cole Mentor is really on top. I mean, he yeah. is as over the top as you get. I mean, six foot four, but as you said, he just reaches up there, and that's why he, he's tricky. He doesn't throw anything in the middle. It's either down or it's up. Adam 
Phillips with a high fly ball. Lifting out to right field. Backing up Peralta. Justin and Peralta. That's an easier catch than the first out. Off the bat of Tavares and a sliding catch in right center. No score here in the desert. Justin Masterson will be the pitcher now for St. Louis. Three scoreless by the lefty Nick Greenwood. Masterson in what has been a disappointing run with the Cardinals. His ninth appearance. Majority of these have been starts. And also taking over at first base, Xavier Scruggs. So Scruggs will get a chance, get a few at bats, and I think it's also another chance to see if Masterson fits into plans for the future. You haven't seen enough? I haven't seen enough that I like, but you know, this, he was an all star in the American League. I want to see if his velocity can get back to the 93 to 95 that it's been in in the past. Yeah, that A.J. Pruszynski, we were talking to him about him, said he used to throw, you know, just have a nasty sinking action. Chopped to short, and Cosma makes the play. And, and said it was, you know, 95, 96 miles an hour, and now it's down three or four miles an hour. Big guy, six foot six. And he just kind of collapses on that back leg, which, you know, doesn't allow him to stay on top of the ball and really have that magic with the sinker. So, something they've been trying to work on. Fly ball into shallow left, and Cosma is there. When we were in Cincinnati, the Reds broadcast team and those associated with their team rave about Justin Masterson. They said, you guys have not seen what we've seen over the years in interleague play, which is a guy that is filthy with his stuff. Just filthy. Big heavy sinker, throwing hard, throws strikes. And unfortunately, we have not seen that in St. Louis. Now, we did witness the one game that was good, which was down in Miami. But he's been all over the place with his control. Correct. And you can just see where a team would be intrigued with Justin Masterson to say, let's be the team that gets him right. Free agent to be. Been a few, been some of those pitchers like that, Dan, where have gotten uh, pitching coaches fired. Where they want to be the one to finally realize the potential of a Kip Wells or somebody like that and because if you have good stuff there's a slider Up the middle and position in the right spot, second baseman Colton Long. One, two, three inning for Justin Masterson. That looked good. Descalso will lead it off for the Cardinals as we start play here in the top of the fifth. Big curveball taken high. Daniel first time up, flight out to right. Daniel had very few at bats the first half of the season. But getting more playing time and numbers have gotten much better as the season's gone along. He actually hit 314 in September. Hit in 17 of his last 22 starts at 371. Oh, that's right, Jim. Well, say what you will about what has been an up and down regular season. There is no doubting, and the numbers prove it. Late, tight situations. Descalso has had good numbers in his career. He's played well in postseason play at crucial times. And he hits it out to right. 
and falling in for a base hit. Daniel is one for two. And it brings in Tony Cruz. No score here in the top of the fifth. Back to St. Louis. Bomarito Sports Update with Pat Paris. All right, guys, thanks. Here's Tony Cruz. That pitch is taken low. American League wild card game will be on Tuesday, and the National League on Wednesday. Pittsburgh, San Francisco. Cardinals know they've got the Dodgers. Kershaw and Granke. What a matchup that'll be in game one with Wainwright and Clayton Kershaw. You know, and Adam Wainwright leads the National League in road ERA. But two of the top contenders for the Cy Young going head to head. Adam finishing up with a flourish, especially as you mentioned on the road. So head to head this season, Dodgers went four of the seven meetings. Cardinals hit five home runs. The Cardinals, you go back to last year's postseason, got to Clayton Kershaw a couple of times. Adam Wainwright has never won at six straight starts. He was trying to do that today if he would have started. And the runner goes to Scalso, throw to second. They got him. Wainwright will head into Friday's start with 21 consecutive scoreless innings. His longest was 26 in 2010. Kozwich has been throwing very well of late. That is seven of the last ten he has thrown out uh, attempted base dealers. There's a 2-1 pitch. And a fly ball into shallow right. Late break by Peralta. Sliding catch for the second time in this game. One other note about Adam Wainwright, where he's been so good. He would have been attempting in 100-plus years of Cardinals baseball, and you'll see the play here by Peralta, to become just the fifth pitcher to go 6-0 and in the month of September. Dizzy Dean, Bob Gibson, Jesse Haynes, and Bill Shirtle back in 1927. Two outs and nobody on. So the Dodgers themselves facing a very hot pitcher coming in. Oh one two Borges. Right, Kershaw's 21 and three. I think he has 11 game winning streak. And then there's Zach Greinke. The Cardinals got to Greinke. The series right after the All Star break. Pitched well in Los Angeles and a blowout win for the Dodgers. And then the Cardinals got to him in game two of the weekend series right after the break. The Dodgers have had a very inconsistent offense also. Chop left side. Ryu, by the way, the left-hander, is throwing on the side today, hoping to get ready for the postseason. Time will tell. The fans, the video tribute to the fans. Their final game of this 2014 season. Reminder that the championship series tickets, division series tickets, on sale right now at Cardinals.com. Games one and two. Will be held and start a week from tomorrow in St. Louis. That's games three and four of the series. One and two will be in Los Angeles. Games three and four will be in St. Louis. Second inning of work for Justin Masterson. And so there's about 43,000 plus sold already for game three. Game four, just over 40,000. So still plenty of tickets 
remaining for those two games against Los Angeles. Second inning of work for Justin Masterson. Al's got his goggles ready. He'll be down in the clubhouse part of the celebration along with Jim Hayes. Governor. And a ground ball booted by Scruggs but recovers in time. McDonald's is celebrating playoff baseball in St. Louis and every day the Cardinals play this postseason get a Big Mac or quarter pounder for just 25 cents when you buy one at regular price 25 cent Big Macs and quarter pounders. It's a Cardinals postseason tradition. Three of the four outs Masterson has gotten been on ground balls and that's what you want to see. Tuffy Gosowicz rounded out to short his first time up. By assuring themselves the Central Division Championship, the fly ball into right, the Cardinals will have spent 33 days in first place this year. The biggest lead that they owned was four and a half. Pittsburgh was in first place by seven day, with seven days, and their biggest lead was one game. As I mentioned earlier, first time in franchise history, the Cardinals heading to four consecutive playoff appearances. Anchored by those two. Go back to 2006, it was Wainwright closing out Detroit. The back end of that game, Brandon Inge, the strikeout. Those two have meant so much to a decade of dominance for the Cardinals. Two balls and no strikes. Now Adam Wainwright thinking about Friday night and going up against his good friend Clayton Kershaw. Two and one on Cliff Pennington who picked up the first hit in this game for Arizona back in the third. Only been three hits in the, in the game for both sides. Kind of a funny year, hasn't it been? It has. It's been crazy at times, frustrating. Yet you felt all along that there was so much talent here that eventually it would win out. Remember, they kept on saying we're bullish on this offense, on this lineup. We think they will hit. There's a base hit in the right. Two out hit. Pennington is two for two. I'd rather see him give up a base hit than a walk. The Cardinals with the most division titles since 1969. With now 12 behind. The Yankees, the Braves, the A's, and the Dodgers. So the most outside of those four. Their 12th division championship since 1969. Two outs and a runner at first as Gregorius hits it out of play. We open up regular season play next year in Chicago, and one of the biggest issues right now for Rob Manfred, the incoming commissioner, and he has got a team together to try to speed up play. They want to try to speed up ball games. They're going to do some different things apparently in the Arizona Fall League and use it as a testing ground. I have a simple suggestion. Call the strike zone. Call the strike zone. All the meetings though and, and here's a good example with Gregorius stepping out of the box and Master at times will walk around the mound. They want to try to eliminate some of the smaller things in the game like that too. 
at one time, and it, and it may still be in the National League, that once a batter reached the, you know, got into the batter's box, you could not leave the batter's box without getting permission from the umpire. Now, obviously, that changes with every pitch. Every hitter steps out, fiddles with their gloves, and And they had the 22nd rule. Now they've moved that down to 12. There's talk of putting up a clock behind home plate. And if the pitch is not thrown, if the batter is in the batter's box, it's a ball against the pitcher. Vice versa, it's a strike against the hitter. I remember playing in, in the uh, NBC semi-pro leagues in Wichita, and they had a clock. That very much was that same deal. Well, that's nothing new. But it's never been enforced. Big plans for this offseason, Al? Um, I haven't been told yet. Similar. <laughs> Here's a one two pitch. A fly ball into right center. Gorgeous over and makes the catch. The Diamondbacks strand a runner. We head to the six. No score. What's on tap? Presented by Budweiser after a long postseason run for us on Fox Sports Midwest. It'll be spring training. We had a record number of games this past spring training, hoping to add a few more, and we'll be coming to you in late January and February and March from spring training in Jupiter, Florida. Let's see, it will be the 2014 defending Central Division champion, and how many more? Lined into left center. Watch Cosmo run. Cut off by Inciarte, and that holds Cosma to a double. That ball gets by him. It's a triple. Right, Pete continues to hit well late in the season. Now his resume does not look too bad. You know, we talk about. Everyday shortstop for World Series champions. Teams have made it to the World Series. He's the everyday shortstop a year ago. Dramatic hit in 2012 in that postseason. Here's Scruggs in his first plate appearance. He made a dazzling play at second base. The recent homestand as well. Scruggs' numbers this year at AAA 286, 21 home runs, 87 RBIs. It was the St. Louis minor league player of the month of August when he hit 345 with eight home runs and 28 RBIs. We'll be in the uh, clubhouse as the Cardinals will celebrate after the game today and reminder that with all the playoff games coming up we hope there's a bunch. We'll have pre and post game shows for everyone on Fox Sports Midwest. Al, Rick, Pat, they'll all be with you. Andy Bennis can be in there. Scruggs is uh, 20 plus homers in the last five minor league seasons. Do you think about a platoon next year, potentially with Adams, who struggle a little bit down the stretch with left handed pitching? One, two. It's kind of uh, interesting to try and think where would you add 
offense and at what position. Three two pitch to Scruggs instead of check on the runner. Yeah, Molina's not going anywhere. Carpenter isn't. Peralta, you wouldn't think. Uh, like you said, maybe a platoon at first base. You know, you is Colton Wong who's put up pretty solid numbers in his rookie year. Off the end of the bat, little squibber, and Cole Mentor will step and throw and makes the play. For a limited time, you can get exclusive access to 2014 playoff and World Series tickets by placing a deposit on new 2015 season tickets. For details, visit cardinals.com slash season. And you're also going to have an, a a bunched up outfield too. Yeah, I mean Holiday's not going any place. John Jay's kind of cemented himself. Infield is in for Colton Wong, who's in the leadoff spot. And this is a spot that he saw a lot of time at in the minor leagues. There's been so much talk that maybe you'd put a Wong at the top of the lineup, drop down Carpenter to give him a chance in more production in terms of power and RBIs. But then when you look at the numbers and what Carpenter has done in terms of on base percentage walks and runs scored. It's hard to remove him from the leadoff spot. And Colton is tied for second among National League rookies with 12 home runs and tied for second with his 41 RBIs. Matt Carpenter has scored the most runs in baseball the last two years coming into play today. One ahead of Mike Trout. The 2 0. Wong hits it towards short. No play at the plate, and Colton Wong makes it 1 0 St. Louis. 60th RBI. Excuse me. Oh, the big Carpenter's. 42. 42. Uh, kind of a rare one that doesn't come with two outs. You know, when the Cardinals celebrate today, they want to do it. At least they'd much rather do it with a win. And picking up number 90 today. 90 sounds a lot better than 89. And Cosmo that good speed and going on contact paid off. Here's Gritchett. So one to nothing St. Louis on the Wong RBI. Richard was in the original lineup and he was going to play right field and talking with Mike Matheny today I don't think we realized how sick how bad holiday had been feeling the last couple of days yeah. well they add another to that collection I'm missing one the last one Post dispatch going to have to come out with a new version. Hopefully, there'll be two missing rings in that collection. Not too many people have those. Strikeout of Gritchick for the second time today. One to nothing, St. Louis, midway through six. What's cooking? Another appearance in the postseason for St. Louis. Their 10th National League Central Division title has been clinched today. They're trying to make it 12 World Series championships and their 20th National League pennant. What's cooking for the Cardinals brought to you by Farmland Foods. Ownership group led by Bill DeWitt. They are here in town. 
as Kevin Segrist takes over. Our Chevy call to the pen, and Greg Garcia takes over at second base. There you see Garcia, but Segrist. This could be an important outing for him. Oh, extremely. Right now, I would say he was not on the roster. And you just want to get him healthy again. One ball, one strike. Last time we saw him, remember, he faced two batters and walked both of them. He eventually came around to score, but he was such a weapon last season when he came to the big leagues. 0 0.45 ERA and and then this year you know some forearm strain turned into a nerve issue and he hasn't he hasn't been right three and one on the pitcher Josh Colmenter Good work by Masterson. And Masterson hadn't pitched in about 20 days, so it really was good work. And a leadoff walk to the pitcher. And right away, Derek Lilliquist going to the bullpen phone. Uh, you know they're concerned about the health of Segrist and the first walk issued by Cardinals pitching today. And a fastball and a strike at 94 to Enciarte. Who is 0 for 2 with a fly out and also bounced back to Nick Greenwood, who had three scoreless innings today. Jordan Zimmerman, the right handed starter. For the Washington Nationals with a no hitter today in the final game of the regular season against the Miami Marlins. Giancarlo Stanton will win the home run championship with 37. There's a fly ball out to left. Spinning and making the catch, Randall Gritchick. Didn't look pretty by Gritchick, but he did get the job done. We've I haven't seen him play very much in left field. And the ball coming off the bat a little different. A.J. Pollock. Grounded back to the pitcher. Grounded out to short. Popped up to the right side. Scruggs runs out of room. I wonder in his wildest dreams did Bill DeWitt think that the Cardinals would be on this kind of run. And especially with the economic climate of the game had not changed yet. When you look at the early 2000s and what was happening with the Yankees and the Red Sox and the amount of money they were spending. Things have changed. I think that the Cardinal organization is the model. And under Bill DeWitt's ownership, you know, fiscally responsible, reinvest the money that fans uh, pay from tickets through the turnstiles and they put it right back into the ball club. And But everything that uh, under his guidance is has been first class and yet it's all made sense you know nothing crazy like some stuff that the Yankees have done in the past and other organizations here's an 0 2 
I asked Bud Seeley directly that question. Are the St. Louis Cardinals the model for every other franchise? And he said yes. And he said the St. Louis Cardinals and the town and the fan base in his mind, and this was just last weekend, it's the best in baseball. They took him around the Hall of Fame and Museum in Ballpark Village. First time he had seen that was last week. Had a private tour with the DeWitts. And he did not know the story about Eddie Goodell. No. Yeah, and he saw the jersey, which was worn by Bill DeWitt. And his father was running the Browns at the time, and Bill Beck decided to have Eddie Goodell used in game two of a doubleheader as a pinch hitter. Walked on four pitches, his only plate appearance in the major leagues, and they did not have a uniform that would fit him except for young Bill DeWitt's. That uniform is over in Ballpark Village, the Hall of Fame and Museum. And you talk to Mr. DeWitt about uh, the minor league system, individual players, and he, he knows everybody in the organization. Cole Mentor is the runner at first and 3 2 pitch. He walked him. That's going to be it for Segrist. Marco Gonzalez had been throwing in the Cardinals' pen, and boy, did he come up with a huge win on Friday. The only member of last year's draft that's in the big leagues, Marco Gonzalez, comes on when we come back. Sam Freeman makes it in there with Kaylee in her final AT&T fan photo of the season. Always one of my favorites. You see the fans come together and take a selfie. Chevy call to the pen, and it's Marco Gonzalez. Marco picked up the win. On Friday night in relief. David Peralta, a little bouncer towards second. Out there on the first, and it's a double play. Gonzalez, one pitch, and gets the double play and gets out of a jam. We'll head to the seventh with the Cardinals leading by the score of one to nothing. Marco Gonzalez, one batter, gets the double play. On the third place hitter in the lineup. Sold for game one. Game two, over 40,000, but still good seats still remaining. And as we have been promoting it throughout the telecast today, those numbers on the rise in terms of being close to sold out crowds. So get your tickets right now. Cardinals.com. Oscar Tavares with two hard hit balls to right, nothing to show for it, takes a pitch up. The starter, Cole Mentor, pitching into the seventh inning now for Arizona. Johnny Cueto picking up his 20th win this year. It's Tavares, nothing to show for it, 0 for 3, but three hard hit balls. Good to see these. And bat for him. You know, he's still trying to get his feet wet out in front on off speed pitch at that big swing so he doesn't get out of the box quickly. And I still believe, and it's so early in his career, he will hit at this level and hit big time. Well, you have to believe that. You know, it's just it's too many people that have endorsed him throughout the minor leagues, exactly. his numbers through the minor leagues. And, you know, Dan, it may be the best thing for his career is not get off to a great start and, you know, work a little harder 
trying to figure it out this level. Garcia drops down a bunt, and they just get him by step. Once again, we'll be in the locker room after the game today for the celebration. And reminder that Missouri Lottery Cardinals Live postgame show will be on Fox Sports Midwest after every playoff game. Jim Hayes will follow the club all the way to a World Series title, we're hoping. Pat Paris and the rest of the crew break down the game action from Ballpark Village. It's all at Fox Sports Midwest. So two outs, and here's Descalso. Daniel is one for two and was caught stealing back in the fifth. I was a little worried about this matchup with Cole Mentor. And we thought that Adam Wainwright would be dealing. But Cole Mentor is kind of one of these guys that you get a comfortable 0 for 4. Uh, you hit the ball, you kind of wonder how it gets you out, but you're always going back to the dugout. Big happy birthday to Tom Parchomsky Sr. His son works at the ballpark, has been there for years, and should be very proud of your son. There's a drive into deep center field, and this ball is caught. Descalso gave it a ride, and Pollock, that big spacious outfield in center, runs it down. We'll stay right here for the singing of God Bless America. Please rise and sing along as we pay tribute to our great nation with the singing of God Bless America. Can't tell me that the uh, wild card has not been a good thing for baseball. An added wild card, the excitement around the game. I mean, look at this final day. Oh, no doubt about it. And I think it's been uh, great. It keeps the hopes alive for so many more clubs. And it'll be exciting uh, postseason once again this year. Mark Trumbo. Marco Gonzalez one pitch last inning got a double play to pitch out of a jam. And it's 2 and 0. Oh. Trumbo with a home run last night to put the game out of reach 5 to 2. He had two homers. He said he actually was looking to go to right center with the pitch against Seth Manus. Got a sinker went down to get it. Great low ball hitter that he is. Ball was down and in and. It's one way he could have hit it. And the 3 0. 3 and 1. Here's a 3 1. Popped up, left side, near the stands, and out of play. So here are the matchups with Oakland winning today. It is set. This is what you've got. The wild card games are Pittsburgh and San Francisco in the National League, Kansas City and Oakland in the American League. 
Also, Dan, went now with the second wild card, you know, it does penalize those wild card teams. Before, they, a lot of times they could run the table because they were the hot team. Good pitch on the changeup and gets Trumbo out in front. And Gonzalez has his first strikeout. Well, again, I mean, you look at Pittsburgh today, it's like a double whammy, Al. I mean, you, you lose potentially your starter in terms of uh, Gary Cole could go in that wild card game as they roll the dice. Clint Hurdle actually has a leadership group, if you will, of his team and brought them in together before the game today and said, what do you guys want to do? Should we go with it with Cole or do you want to approach it a different way? And they said, let's go for it. Let's win the division. So they burn Cole, and then their backup catcher gets hurt in the game, too. And Russell Martin is a question mark for that game. Their top catcher. Well, and, and I think part of that thinking is because uh, it's no picnic being the wild card winner. You got that one game, one game play in. So you have to use another top pitcher. And, you know, you spend a lot of bullets trying to get there get to that and then you have to go play the series you know when you probably have lost two of your top starters so they've had to pitch on Sunday and and you know the play in game Gonzalez has been sharp so far the double play then the strikeout of Trumbo and Lamb is in the hole one and two Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Marco Gonzalez. I was thinking of Dan Kantrovitz every time I watch Michael Walker or I see a Marco Gonzalez, two of the top picks for the Cardinals in back-to-back -back years already here in the big leagues. And, you know, it's such a collective effort all the way from the minor leagues and learning the right way to play the game, the way the Cardinals want it to be played, and then what's happening here at the big league level. You were thinking of Dan Kentrovitz. I was thinking of what about Arizona's scouting director, what he's thinking, you know, uh, another owner saying, hey, we, we drafted before the Cardinals in the 19th spot, and we passed up this kid, and he's already pitching in the big leagues and doing quite well. They held the number one overall pick in 2005. The Diamondbacks did. That was Justin Upton. He's now with the Atlanta Braves. Trevor Bauer was third overall in 2011. He's now with Cleveland. Jared Parker, ninth overall in 07 with Oakland. Max Scherzer, the St. Louis product, was drafted 11th overall by Arizona. Won a Cy Young with Detroit a year ago. Stephen Drew, 15th overall pick in 2004. And he's with the Yankees, so they've had high draft choices, and they'll pick first in the upcoming draft held next year. We'll see a different manager next year with Arizona as well. They've had Buck Showalter and Bob Brenly, Bob Melvin, A.J. Hinch, who's interviewed with Houston for their position and just fired on Friday was Kurt Gibson and you wonder about a Chris Maloney or a Jose Okendo those guys know Tony La Russa quite well and Mike Eldredi and him out in front again with a change up Cosmo whips it over to first to Scruggs Gonzalez at AAA Cosmo Scruggs AAA guys all part of a championship team Thank you, Pat, for that scoop. Keeping me up to date. Pat Paris with us every night before and after every game. Does a great job. Rick Horton, Tim McCarver added to our broadcast team this year. And now we've been together 17 years. A lot of fun. We're legal now, huh? Not in that way, Al. <laughs> it has been fun. 
Please tell me it's not that way. No. <laughs> <laughs> Cruz pops out behind home plate. Cole Mentor pitching into the eighth. And the Mazda game summary. Let's tell you about it. Cardinals with a one run lead. As we play here in the eighth inning, Nick Greenwood made the start. We've seen Justin Masterson. Now Marco Gonzalez pitching has done a fine job. So is Cole Mentor by himself, seven and a third. Borges, couple of hops hit too short. Two down. You know, Dan, one of the reasons it has been so much fun for us is we've had a chance to cover a winning ball club just about every year. And how many times have we walked back from Pittsburgh? Oh. And, you know, those years where they had 21 losing seasons and said, what would it be like to broadcast a a team that you know is not in contention that we are so thankful that uh, we get an opportunity to be around championship caliber players on a daily basis. Pete Cosma with two outs. First pitch, a strike. Cardinals have a right hander getting loose in the pen. Hard for us to see here because of where the bullpens are. It looks like it's Jason Mott, just by mannerisms. Here's an 0-2. Popped up and playable for Mark Trumbo in foul territory. And a 1-2-3 inning for Cole Mentor. Bottom of the eighth rolls in when we come back. Yeah, I do. Coming up after the game. Dan, it'll be a post-game celebration for the Cardinals. Al will be in the clubhouse. I'll be in the clubhouse. And the only prediction I have, Dan, is that I will be in pain, that my retinas will burn because the players will go after me. I like it. Gonzalez now in his third inning of work. And Jim, uh, any idea if this would be a subdued celebration? Any of the players talk about that? I mean, many of these guys have been there before. Are they going to just let it rip and have some fun? When I was talking to guys before the game, they didn't want to count their chickens. They wanted to make sure it got done so there wasn't a game tomorrow. We now know they are Central Division champs. I'll tell you this, Dan. After Pittsburgh lost, the uh, celebration in the clubhouse was subdued then I have a feeling they're going to cut loose because this season has been a grind and I think they just want to have a little fun I feel the same way and Pennington is the first out Marco Gonzalez looks outstanding here early on he has recorded six outs two strikeouts along the way non-stop action heart pounding excitement historic performances don't miss the 2014 postseason beginning September 30th I'll be watching you and Jim and Pat Rick with the post games coming up for the playoff run and looking forward to it again we'll have those post game shows following all the playoff games on Fox Sports Midwest Jim will be in the clubhouse and with the team and guys will be back in the studio in ballpark village you know ballpark village will be hopping those nights as well Wow <laughs> it's yeah. gonna be crazy Here's a ground ball hit the second Garcia stays with it two down And just think about those Games that you can come down to ballpark village and watch all the action and be with a whole bunch of Cardinal fans a little breaking ball right there and Pacheco is going to pinch hit for a home mentor. He did a nice job just allowing the one run on three hits It's going to be kind of fun to watch the reaction of Cardinal fans at uh, Ballpark Village. Can't wait. It's like having your little, little living room celebration just with a whole bunch more people. One 
One ball and one strike. But sea of bread that'll be in St. Louis again those seats still on sale right now for games three and four. Cardinals.com. Good change up again at 79 miles an hour by Gonzalez. He looks smooth and comfortable coming out of the pen. And who knows, maybe this is where his future lies. Yeah, I, I think it probably would lie there, you know. But he's very intriguing, and he's passed the test of how to warm up for as a reliever. I was talking to Derek Willequist about that yesterday with these young guys. First time out of the pen, you know, do they how they warming up? He said they do a good job, you know, get to that point where you're eight pitches away and don't spend too much, don't waste any bullets down there in the bullpen. Two two in the dirt. And Marco, from when he's made his major league debut in Colorado, he is a refined his pitching skills even more and added a more reliable curveball and cutter to go along with that great changeup and his ability to spot his fastball. Ooh, went with the changeup on three and two and a two out walk. There's still to go in this game the top and middle of the lineup for the Arizona Diamondbacks and they'll pinch run here. Owings. Not sure who it's to be Ahmed. Nick Ahmed. Yeah. So he started play. in game one of this series. Right. Saw him at second base in game one. Ciarte's 15 game inning streak on the line right here. And if you're wondering, it would carry over to next year. If it continues with a base hit today. And an 18 game hitting streak earlier this year. That's the longest in the National League by a, a rookie. Two and oh the count. Cardinals lead the major leagues with those 22 time Tampa Bay. It's the most since 1968 when they had 30. Two and zero, the count on NCR tape. Around that ninety mile an hour mark with his fastball, but I'm sure the hitters, after seeing so many change ups and off speed pitches, that ninety miles an hour looks a lot quicker. Diamondbacks have the number one overall pick because they have the worst record will finish with the worst record in baseball It's been a long year here in Arizona yeah, You got to look at yeah, players have to look themselves in the mirror. They got their manager fired General manager Two and two the count and they Had a lot of trouble winning here at home had injuries that have mounted to disablement list 15 times and almost 1,400 games missed. As recent as 2011, they were in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. 
So two historic franchises though square off beginning Friday night. Most playoff games all time. The Cardinals 234 just behind the Yankees. The Dodgers right behind St. Louis. Ooh, that quick move and back in safely. The Cardinals have met the Dodgers four different times in the postseason. 1985, the go crazy folks home run. 2004 in 09. And last year in the league championship series, four games to two, won by St. Louis. Oh, we got him. He he picked him off. Got this him. time he got him. Marco Gonzalez sends us to the ninth. Should be a great, great celebration. Marshall will take over. Ninth inning rolls in. Evan Marshall, the right-hander. Chevy called to the pin. 57th appearance for the D-backs reliever. 20 of his last 23 relief appearances has been scoreless. Opponents are only batting 189 against him with runners in scoring position. 19 holds as a single season are the most by a D-back rookie in club history. Xavier Scruggs. Marco Gonzalez is at the on-deck circle. Then we'll see Randall Gritchick. You mentioned the numbers that Scruggs has put up in the minor leagues, which makes him certainly intriguing. The amount of home runs and power around the league is way, way down for obvious reasons. Teams are looking for power bats. That's why you you know you look at it, Dan, and if you can hit, you know, somebody will find a place for you. Same with pitching. You're auditioning every time you put that uniform on and take the field. One ball and two strikes on Scruggs. Tap foul again. The Diamondbacks will have the top of their lineup in Ciarte, Pollock, and Peralta. So of the three left, two of them are left handers. So Marco Gonzalez, the way that he's pitching here this afternoon, no reason to think he couldn't finish this up. Marco may be one of those guys that. A lot of times there's there's left handers that have better success against right handed batters. And Marco may be with that tight because of his good changeup. Another foul off the front foot. I also wonder about his immediate future with the postseason. You, you just never know. I mean the Cardinals may look at some of the matchups and say, Hey, we want to have more than just a Randy Choate available for an Adrian Gonzalez. Well, I, I think that after pitching Friday night and Mike bringing back here on Sunday, that's a real possibility yeah. because one more look at him. Scruggs in the air out to shallow right, and the catch is made by Trumbo. Final time of the season, we say this this copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. It's Tommy Pham there who's in the ball game, and we'll see if they can get to him. Gonzalez here, then Gritchick. We know that Marco could swing the bat. Good two way player at Gonzaga. He's shown he can handle the bat a little bit here. Three for nine with a pair of doubles and a run scored. And he got a double in his first major league at bat, Colorado. And was driven in by his boyhood idol, Matt Holiday. Pretty cool. Our crowd today, 30,617, 30617. Brown 
ball to second. And there's two down. Don't miss a minute of the postseason excitement at Bush Stadium. Tickets for potential wild card National League Division and National League Championship Series on sale now at Cardinals.com. There's David Freeze right there. There's Ozzy. <laughs> Love that spot. Richick, a little bouncer to second. This will send us to the bottom of the night. Cardinals with a one run lead in game number 162. For the top of the lineup. A reminder we'll have the post game celebration in the clubhouse. AJ Brzezinski. You wonder what's going through a guy like. AJ Brzezinski's mind right now and what could be his final season, maybe his last regular season game here today. Right, you know, he, he was released and didn't want to end it that way, so chose to up with the Cardinals. First pitch, slicing down the left field line, sliding forward and into the wall. Tommy Fan, what an effort. Uh, now you know why he's been hurt so many times. You know, in the minor leagues, just that all out effort. Way back when, our Toyota Keys is have fun. They've been having fun, but don't get anybody hurt. And apparently, he's okay. But look at this effort one more time. The ball's going to keep on slicing away from him into the corner. And you could hear him make contact. Probably con uh, concrete down at the bottom. Maybe all right now, but he'll feel that later on. Tommy Pham came up as an infielder, moved to the outfield. Tremendous athlete, and it's taken him a long time to get to the big leagues, and the Cardinals are very high on him. Could have left a couple times as a minor league free agent, but wanted to stick it out with St. Louis. Marco Gonzalez in his fourth inning of work. Greenwood, Masterson, now Gonzalez. One to nothing, St. Louis. One ball and one strike. One ball and two strikes. Two and two. Most games around baseball are final. The two two pitch. And a ground ball that's tapped foul. Could look at Nick Greenwood as being your winner today if the Cardinals hold on. Marco Gonzalez. The 2-2. Two -two. The 2-2. Two -two. Fouled back by NCR tag. Gonzalez in line for a save.
ground ball it's tapped foul. Marco the only blemish he's had in this game is the walk to the pinch hitter Pacheco and then he picked him off. So he's pitched outstanding baseball eight outs looking for three more. Fly ball, left field, fan with room. So Mike Matheny will go to his bullpen. He's made the call. And Marco Gonzalez, outstanding job done out of the pen. Such an important role he may play in the upcoming postseason. Appearance number 57. We saw Martinez on Friday night, only six pitches in that game. And the Cardinals are two outs to go. A.J. Pollock will be the hitter. Pollock has walked, he has grounded out twice, 0 for 2, and what a job by Marco Gonzalez. There's a tight slider for strike one. That pitch there has been the key all season for Martinez. It'll be the key in the upcoming playoffs. The slider. There it is. A good one, and it's nothing at two. Earlier this year, Martinez had a streak of 16 and a third scoreless innings. We've seen him be dominant before. The 0 2 went with the slider again, and that's ball one. You may remember in one of the most important games of the year for the Cardinals and putting the Brewers out of reach, Martinez in the extra inning game with Tony Cruz behind the plate. And it was that slider that Cruz was able to keep in front a couple of times with the go ahead run at third in Ryan Braun. The 1 2. Fastball at 99. Again, if you're just joining us, maybe you're out watching some football. Keeping yourself busy on this Sunday. The Pirates lost 4-1 to to Johnny Cueto and the Reds, setting up the Cardinals for the division championship. The slider just missed. Johnny Cueto with... Win number 20 this year to join Adam Wainwright, Clayton Kershaw, the only 21 game winner in the National League. And the 2 2. From 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. Fly ball out to deep right field. That'll stay in the ballpark. And out number two, put in the glove of Randall Grichik. Budweiser, players of the game. The St. Louis Cardinals, the champions of the Central Division. The 10th Central title in franchise history. Budweiser, players of the game. Congratulations to the St. Louis Cardinals. David Peralta, the former Cardinal farmhand who is a pitcher. Now the starting right fielder. And the Cardinal fans on their feet here in Arizona. This should do it. Popped up left side. Fam wants it. He's got it. A fitting way to end the season. Shutout number 23. Win number 90. And it's time to celebrate.
the 2014 National League Central Division champions, the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals finish up the regular season at 90 and 72. They win the Central by two games over Pittsburgh. Back to back Central Division titles. 97 wins a year ago, 90 in 2014. The season began with a 1-0 win over the Cincinnati Reds. The regular season ends with a 1-0 win. And today it's against the Arizona Diamondbacks, the seventh 1-0 win by the Cardinals in 2014.